Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 12 of the Halloween Craft Countdown where I'm sharing 20 Halloween themed Cricut projects in 20 days. 10 of the projects are designed by me and 10 are guest designer projects from some of my crafting friends. Today's project is by Tara Wiley and it's this wonderfully interactive haunted house cake topper. Tara is the creative owner and designer behind CraftTaraCreates.com. Her mission is to help you master your Cricut machine through teaching you how to make cake toppers. With Tara, you'll learn how to craft cake toppers that will add a special touch to your celebrations and everyday moments. Not only does this cake topper have a wonderfully spooky haunted house theme, but it's filled with M&Ms, which are released using the mechanism on the bottom of the topper. This is such a clever idea and will be a real shade stopper for a Halloween party or family gathering. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. Register a free ticket for the Halloween Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23. If you're already registered, check for an email from me with subject line Halloween Craft Countdown ticket information or any of the other emails from me that you've been sent throughout the countdown. Can't find them? Check your junk or spam box to see if they've gone there by mistake. These emails contain the link to view the countdown projects and download today's files. Scroll down this page to find today's project. Click the button to start the files automatically downloading to your computer or mobile device. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you've missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23 bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Halloween Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. All downloads come in zip folders. You will need to unzip them before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Let's make a haunted house shaker cake topper with real candy. This design includes a hidden candy box you can view from the front, plus it's reloadable with a latch door at the bottom. Use this cake topper to surprise everyone with candy after the party or make it rain candy onto your cake by opening the latch door. Hi, I'm Tara from CraftTaraCreates.com. Stick around until the end of the video for a free gift from me. Let's get started with the tools and materials you need for the Haunted House Cake Topper. For this project, you can use any of the full-sized Cricut machines. You'll need a Cricut mat, clear acetate, a variety of cardstock. I use matte black and glitter cardstock, but be sure to use no shed or no mess glitter cardstock. I'm using a few scrap sheets of cardstock for the Haunted House windows, house sign, and ghost. You will need a scoring tool that is compatible with your cutting machine, your favorite paper crafting glue, an alcohol wipe or pad, a hot glue gun, phone tabs and tape in a variety of thicknesses, sticks for the cake topper. I use striped paper straws for this project, but you can use the white paper cake pop sticks. You will need two. And you'll need candy. I used M&Ms. I forgot to show the Velcro and double sided tape, so I'll point those out later in this project. Okay, let's get this project set up in Cricut Design Space. Open up a new window in Cricut Design Space and now we can upload the cut file and get it onto our canvas. Click the upload button on the left side and I already have the cut file uploaded, but you can click on the upload button and follow the prompts to get the cut file into Cricut Design Space. Select the cut file and then click add to canvas. Once the cut file is on your canvas, go ahead and zoom out so you can see the whole thing. I usually use Scroll down to the solid circle and make sure the size is six and a half inches wide, just to make sure it's the right size. Then ungroup the whole project and we're gonna to need to make a couple adjustments. I can't upload cut files into Cricut Design Space with score lines, so we'll add them here. Select each of these red rectangles and then change the operation to score. You can tell it's score because they're now dashed lines. Select the whole object and then click attach. That attaches the score line to the object you want it to be on. Select the other red rectangle and click score. It looks like it disappears, but it actually is still there. If you select it and highlight it and then click attach, you can see the little score lines in under the attach. Lastly, we have four vertical lines on these strips. They're a little bit harder to see, so you may need to zoom in a little bit so you, that you can select them. Select each of the lines. You can hold down the shift key so you can select multiple. 
and then change the operation to score. And then all of them are dash lines. Go ahead and select the four lot vertical lines in the shapes and highlight those and then click on attach. You can tell you have them all because you have the four vertical lines and then the two shapes that go with them. And that is all that you have to do to prepare this project and get it ready to send to your Cricut machine. Go ahead and click make it to send this project to your Cricut machine. You'll see all the different mats with all the shapes on each mat. You can scroll down and double check all the colors and make sure you have the right size paper for everything. You can even see the score lines and make sure they're attached to the correct objects. We'll start with this one. I'm going to show you how to select acetate. This is the acetate candy box that goes inside of your cake topper. Go ahead and click browse all materials and type ACE to look for acetate. Select that material and then you can see that it is looking for the scoring tool and then it's going to be looking for the fine point blade once the scoring is done. Go ahead and have your Cricut machine cut out all the different pieces and shapes with cardstock and acetate and I'll see you in the next section to assemble this project. All right, we have all of our pieces all cut out and all the shapes. There's a lot of little shapes and I put those off to the side. You see a little acetate box that we're gonna create. These are all the little shapes, I'll use those later. First, we're gonna make our paper strip. So this is pretty side up. The score lines that were added are on the top side and I line these up with that little tab on one side going to the flat edge of the other one. The goal here is to make one big long strip. So attach these two together with the one little tab and a little bit of glue. I'm using the Cricut mat here to make sure the whole strip is straight across. Glue them together and then allow this to dry so that it doesn't change shape on you for the next section. Once it's dry, then you can move on to the next part, which is to fold down one set of the tabs on one side. So go ahead and go across the entire thing and fold over the little tabs all the way down the edge. This is just something we're gonna do on one side. And then you can see there's a big gap and then continue on to the next set. All right, so now we have one side with folded over tabs. We're gonna curl this around and make a ring. Add glue to the other tab on the other side and we're going to finish off this whole ring. Let the glue dry so that the ring holds its shape. One side is folded in and the other side has the tabs up. What we're gonna do is take um, our yellow circle that has a slightly flat edge and we're going to line it up with the little gap in the strip to um, make almost like a little dish for our cake topper. Find some glue that you like that does not dry super fast. So hot glue doesn't work here. This glue that I'm using doesn't dry really fast, so it allows me to go all the way around and apply glue to all these little edges. And then I will add the circle on the inside that will be the new base for the project. So go around the whole edge with a type of glue that you like that does not dry super fast. And again, line up the flat edge with the little cutout at the bottom and just drop it in and make sure that it is well adhered to the tabs and push it down and make sure the glue is really stuck well. Go all the way around the edges just to be sure. You can turn it over and check to see to make sure all the edges are down flat. And now we've created like a little dish. Next thing we're gonna do is grab a pair of scissors and we're gonna cut the, the little gap in the strip. We're gonna remove that little gap. This is where the little acetate candy box is going to be added. So that's what we just created was a little spot for that so that the candy can be um, added and reloaded later. All right, let's move on to the acetate box. This is where we're gonna put the candy in. So this is basically gonna be the candy holder. So go ahead and fold on all the score lines and you will eventually start to make a like little candy box, except for one side is, is open. So one side will be closed and the other side will be open. This is kind of a long, narrow box that we're gonna put candy in, kind of like the boxes you get at a movie theater with candy in it. Fold in all the edges, and for acetate, I'll be using double-sided tape to put this together. You can use glue, 
if you want. It really doesn't matter. I would not recommend hot glue because it might distort. The plastic might melt it a little bit. Um, or if you do use hot glue, just don't use a ton of it. Maybe just add little spots. But for this, I'm going to use double-sided tape and just run it down the edges where I want everything to be. But here is where you're going to use your alcohol wipe. Because we're going to add actual food candy into the inside, I'm going to use alcohol wipe to make sure that the inside of this acetate is clean and that it's okay and doesn't have any residue from being on the Cricut mat or anything like that. So I'm just going to wipe it off and clean it and make sure it's, it's ready to add food to it. Once the alcohol wipe is clean, I'm going to go ahead and add the double-sided tape to the edges where I want to combine this little candy box. You can use whatever kind of double-sided tape you have. Maybe a tape runner would be a little bit easier. Um, like I said, you can also use glue if you want, but the, I think the advantage of double-sided tape here is that it, it sticks immediately. You don't have to wait for any drying time. I'm adding double-sided tape to the long side and then another sheet to the short side so I can close both of those edges and create a long, narrow, skinny box. With double-sided tape, I'll remove the backing to expose the adhesive and then I'll fold over the edge and connect it to the other one. It's a little bit challenging to make sure everything sticks well because you can't really get your fingers down to make sure. So you can grab a cake pop stick or like a long stick or something to kind of make sure everything is well stuck together. As you can see, the, the box is starting to come into shape. It's, it's long, narrow. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom edge to remove the backing for the double-sided tape and then stick it down to the other piece to close that part off. Again, I'll use another, uh, this is a paper straw to make sure everything's stuck well together. All right, we have our clear acetate box done. So let's move on. The next thing we're gonna do is grab the black piece. There's a couple of score edges on this as well, so fold them up. This is gonna be the bottom edge and that's gonna hold in all of our candy. We will add this acetate box directly to this piece of cardstock. You're gonna line up the bottom of the box with that score line at the bottom and just put it like just slightly above it or right on the edge of it, really. Again, I'm going to use double-sided tape on the bottom of the box, although it really doesn't matter which side's the bottom, on one side of the box, and I'm going to add that to this round circle. This will hold the candy box in place inside of the cake topper. You could definitely use glue here. I would keep it around the outside edges because the inside part you'll be able to see a little bit through the, the cake topper. There's a bit of a window on the front of the haunted house and you can see through. So I'm definitely putting the tape or whatever glue you wanna use around the outside edges of the box so it's not as viewable. Line up the bottom open part of the box. So the bottom part of the box here is the open part and I'm lining it up with the score line. I wanna be able to fold over that bottom edge to cover up the bottom. So I'm just gonna put it just like a little itty bitty smidge above the score line so that it will, that little bottom flap will fold over the acetate box. As you can see that little flap the little latch at the bottom will fold over. We're gonna use Velcro for that part. And then this will go directly into the base of your cake topper. It fits perfectly, and all you have to do is glue it in. 
The advantage of doing this is that once this candy box is filled, candy is actually quite heavy. So having a double thick back um, base is really helpful to, to as a structure for this cake topper. So I have two layers of cardstock here to make it nice and strong. And now we have our candy box hidden inside of our cake topper. Just want to make sure everything's in there well. This you won't really see this black part on around the outside because everything's going to cover that up. So let's just go ahead and make sure it's in there good. Now you can go ahead and go around the edge of your cake topper and fold in the little tabs because we're going to get ready and put the top on it as well. Go ahead and fold in all these little tabs. The goal here is to make them flat because we're going to lay something over top and glue it just like we do with the other side. So we're going to add, we're going to put glue around the edge and add a top to this. Before we add the glue, I'll go ahead and tack on a piece of Velcro. So I'll pause real quick right here because I wanted to show you the little Velcro tabs that I have. These are small round circles. You could even use a smaller one. It looks like they're 5 8 inch in size. I found these in the sewing section of the craft store. While making this project, I realized I don't actually need a full circle. So I'm going to go ahead here and cut one of these in half. So I'll have one of each side of the pieces of Velcro, like the hard side and then the soft side. And that is all you need to pull this all together. I'm going to take the, the piece of the Velcro that's a little bit of the harder scratchy side and add that directly to the latch for the candy box. These little tabs are sticky on the back, so I didn't add any other stickiness. We'll add the other side later. But first we're going to go ahead and add the top to close off our cake topper. The top piece here has a bit of a window so that you can see through and you can see the candy. Again, use your glue that does not dry super fast and go around the whole edges and add glue so that we can seal in our candy box. Add the top to it and then take some time to make sure that the top is well adhered to those little tabs because the candy box kind of holds everything up a little bit higher. So you want to take a moment, make sure everything is well stuck together. You can see at the top of mine, it was a, there was a bit of a gap. So I took some time here to make sure everything was stuck well together. It really closes in the whole project. So take a moment, make sure everything's well stuck together and all the gaps are closed. Add any extra glue around the edges if you need to. All right, let's move on to put together our little haunted house. I have all these little shapes. So what I wanna do first is put this together. As you can see, I already realized I had it upside down. So I switched it. This will just help to make sure you have all the pieces, you're happy with the colors, and you know where everything goes. Because some of these little pieces are a little bit confusing. Like this little fence piece, it actually went on the other side. Dry assembling everything just helps you know where everything goes and it, and it lets you know you have all the pieces and you know where everything is going and um, it helps you figure out if you want to use any of the foam tape versus the regular glue. These little shapes go behind the windows just to give it a little bit of color. I put little tabs on the edges so that you could add on foam, little foam tabs to give it some dimension if you want, but if you don't want to, you can just add some glue. All right, let me take this apart put everything where I know it goes and I will get started with this. I'm gonna go ahead and start with these little windows. The little tabs on the rectangles are for foam tabs if you'd like to give it a little bit of dimension of the window. There's just enough space for a little bit of foam that you could add. I'm gonna add a piece of foam on each one. And then when I'm ready, I will go ahead and add them to the back of each window. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a little bit of dimension. It almost looks like a little shadow. It makes the windows look a little more dimensional. Next, I'm gonna add more foam tabs around the rest of the back of the haunted house. I added enough to make sure that it had a good structure and that everything would be nice and strong. You can add this directly to your cake topper base that we are already created. You can already see how it's coming together. I'm 
Next, I'm going to move on to the rooftops of the little houses on the left and the right. I added foam to them and added those to their spots. Now I have this special roof that has the window cut out and I'm going to do the same thing with the tabs and add a little spot of a foam tab on each one and then I'll add this purple or pink colored window to the rooftop. That will go up there. I added a little bit more foam around the edges and I stuck that to the top. Next, I'm gonna add the little spider so I don't lose it. I added a little piece of foam tape and stuck the little spider right in its spot. I'm gonna move on to the fences now. These are pretty thin, so if you wanna glue them on, you can. I have some thin tape, so I'm gonna add a thin pieces of foam tape to the back of the fences so that they have a little bit extra dimension. I'm using my little uh, craft knife to cut pieces of foam exactly to the size that I need. Pull off the adhesive backing of each one and then add it to its spot. I really like the glitter cardstock next to the black matte cardstock. It's, it's the perfect level of dimension there. All right, let's move on to the little details. This is my little ghost. I'm just gonna glue the ghost back to, to the black background, and then I'll add foam later to attach it to the cake topper itself. The ghost will go toward the top. And then this is a little house sign. It just says boo. And I'm going to glue those together as well. The, the ghost and the house sign and the little badge, you can really put them wherever you want. They don't have any sp specific spot they have to go in, so put them wherever you think they best go. I'm gonna use my craft knife again to cut some small strips of foam and I will add some foam to the fence for the little house sign. Then I'll add a big strip of foam to the back of the ghost and so I can add that to the top. There's the little house sign that says boo and here's our ghost at the top. I love the big yellow circle behind the house. It looks like a, a huge fall moon. And then we have our little bats. You, these are really, really thin. You don't have to use foam for these, but I love adding foam. So I went it and cut off some more thin strips of foam to add to the back of the bats. But again, you could glue them on if you wanted to. So we're adding our little bats to the big fall harvest moon in the background. There we go. Now we've assembled the whole thing. It looks awesome. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add on the sticks here. I'm gonna show you how I add them on so that, they're, that they are perfectly aligned. I'm gonna tape them down exactly four inches apart on my Cricut mat so that I know that they're in the right spot and I know exactly where I'm gonna put my cake topper. So this is where you're gonna need your hot glue gun. Apply a line of hot glue along each edge of the sticks. This works well for the paper straws because they're a little bit thicker. And then just drop your cake topper down. In just a few seconds, it will be perfectly adhered. While this is sitting here, I'll go ahead and add the Velcro. It has stickiness on it, but if you need to, add some double-sided tape or some other glue just to make sure that it stays down. I did end up using double-sided tape later just to make sure it was on there really well. And now that the cake pop stick are dry, you can pull them off. If you're worried about residue, you can take another alcohol wipe and kind of wipe down these sticks if you need to. All right, everything's put together. The last thing we have to do is put some candy in it. I am using M&Ms. They fit really well in here. Any candy that's similar size to M&Ms would probably work. Go ahead and fill up your little candy 
box. You probably need like a spoon or a little cup or something because so, it's kind of a narrow spot to put in, put in all the candy. Go ahead and fill it up. You don't have to fill it up all the way. If you do, like I did here, um, it won't actually shake very much and that might be okay. And if you're having a hard time um, latching it, move the candy down to the bottom so you have something to kind of push down on. And you can see that it's all up and everything stays in and your cake topper is ready to go. And if you want to see how it all comes back out, if you unlatch the bottom, you'll see that the candy just comes rushing out, which you could do right over top of the cake if you wanted to. I just wanted to say a big thank you for joining me in this Halloween crafting journey today. I hope this project sparked your creativity and maybe even taught you something new along the way. It was such a blast creating the spooky yet sweet haunted house cake topper for the Halloween craft countdown. But before you go, I have one more exciting thing to share with you. Make your way to crafteracreates.com forward slash free guide and snag your very own beginner's guide to Cricut cake toppers. Absolutely free. Just fill out the form with your info and give the button a click and you'll have instant access to the guidebook and a special video message from me. In this guide, I've answered all the lingering questions about Cricut cake toppers that you've been hoping to get answered. We'll dive into topics like which Cricut machine is perfect for cake toppers, the best glue and paper to use, and I'll even spill the beans on my personal favorite tools and materials that work well. So don't wait any longer. Go grab the guide right now. Head over to crafteracreates.com forward slash free guide and grab your very own copy. That's all from me today. Happy crafting, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a Halloween haunted house cake topper filled with M&Ms. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more quickie crafts and Halloween fun. I hope to see you tomorrow for day 13 of the Halloween craft countdown. Don't forget the link to get the cut files for this project is craftwithsarah.com forward slash hcc23 but they're only free to download for 24 hours after this video goes live. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!